the five decimals, first of all, you have to put it into the right form. Nowadays, because everything is used with calculators, you really need to recognize that like the eight and one tenth divided by five, the divided by sign is on the calculator, but what we do is say into is not on a calculator. So you first of all have to be able to recognize that when you write this out, the divisor or the second number always goes on the outside of your division sign. So it's going to be 5 into is the same as divided by 5. Okay, the rule for dividing decimals is that you have to move the decimal on the divisor or the outside as far as you can. Okay, remember if there is no visible decimal, it is at the end, just like the periods at the end of a sentence, the decimals at the end of a number. What you've got then is that you don't have to move it on the outside, so you don't need to move it on the inside. It will go straight up from there. And then you are going to divide pretty much as if the decimals weren't there. 5 goes into 8 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract 3 left over. Starter again. Bring down the 1. 5 goes into 31 six times. Here's where your lineup is very, very important that you've got to make sure that you are lining everything up, otherwise your decimal is going to be in the wrong position. Continuing, 6 times 5 is 30. One left over, and at this point you can't say remainder or part of a fraction. We want you to keep going. So you're going to add a zero onto the end and keep going. And then 5 into 10, oh, we finally get an ending point because at that point we have no remainders. We will show you how to end problems a little bit better on some of the ugly problems later. Okay, let's look at some problems that have the same numbers in it, but the decimals are in different places. Remember the rule says, move the decimal as far as you can on the outside, and you're going to do the same thing to the inside. No matter what it looks like, we're going to do that first. So I'm going to move it over one on the outside, one on the inside, and it's going to go straight up from there. Then 4 into 24, and the 6 is going to go directly above the 4. Okay, same numbers, different problem. I'm going to go over to, oh, no visible decimal, which means it's at the end. Remember, um, just like a period on a sentence, that's where the decimal's at the end. If I move 2 on the outside, I've got to go 2 on the inside, and I can't leave gaping holes, so I will add zeros. And 4 into 24 goes directly above the 6, and a 0, and a 0. Okay, now looking at this, I'm going to move it over 1, over 1, and go straight up. Then, because I've placed that decimal, I have to ask myself, how many times does 4 go into 2? which, of course, it doesn't. Then 4 into 24 goes the 6. Notice the 6 is directly above the 4 in all three of these examples. Okay, looking at another set of similar numbers, but they're to different decimal places. Let me start here, where I've got two places on the outside, which means I'm going to have to move two places on the inside. Add a 0 and your decimal will go straight up. 12 into the 14 is going to go once. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 left over. Bring down that 4. 12 into 24 is 2. For the 24, nothing left over. Bring down the 0, and I pick up a 0. Noticing that because you've placed the decimal point before you start the problem, you didn't lose that you had that zero on the end. Okay, continuing. I've got over 2, over 2, and this is just going to be 12 into 144. Goes once, 12, 2, notice the same numbers, and a 2. 12 times 12 is 144. 
Okay, now let's look at over 3 on the outside there. And again, no visible decimal point, so I place it at the end and go over 1, 2, 3. Phew, big problem. Three zeros in, and I've got the 12 into the 144 is the 12, and three zeros. 